Okay, so uh, we are going to uh, make start. So Heidi has actually prepared her talk on a uh, video. So she's going to share screen and um, play her talk through the video. If there are any, uh, you know, as a video, if there are any issues, we will stop and uh, Heidi will present live if, if that seems necessary. So um, I am going to hand over to Heidi. Welcome, Heidi. Thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you back again. Um, Heidi is uh, an unschooler and uh, is actually really you're doing a lot to promote unschooling as a home educating approach in the UK. So go ahead, Heidi. Well, thank you for um, thank you for having me here again, Julia. I um, I do introduce myself properly in the video, which I will share in a minute, um, and hopefully that will um, enable me. So what what playing the video does is enable me not only to know that my um, presentation keeps within the time frame, um, but it also means I can be available in the chat. So if during the presentation you have some um, questions. I am. I will be in the chat if you want to um, you know, type them in there. Um, there will be time, so I can say because I know how long the presentation is. There will be time also at the end um, for questions as well. So if you want to concentrate on the presentation and get to the end um, before then asking your questions, um, that that will also be um, available. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. We're going to be talking about trusting our. Um, children with their own education um, and as Juliet said I am an unschooling parent and advocate so it is very much from an unschooling um, perspective so I hope you enjoy that this morning I'm going to um, screen share that with you now you can get going so you should be able to see that um, now and I will press play excellent thank you Juliet that's what I need um, and off we go Welcome everyone to this presentation on trusting our children. Uh, my name is Heidi Steele. I am a former teacher and um, unschooling advocate, as well as an unschooling parent to four always unschooled children who are happy living and learning as they go. You can read more from me at liveplaylearn.org. Uh, you can come and join me on Facebook at Live Play Learn. That's where I'm most active, um, providing daily support and encouragement uh, for unschooling families, as well as keeping people up to date with other things that I am involved in. Um, I'm available on Instagram, YouTube, and I have a podcast called Unschooling Conversations that you can link via Anchor and other um, podcasting platforms, as well as following those on YouTube. So thank you for joining me for this presentation. We're going to be having a look at trusting our children with their own education. We're going to be thinking about what it means to trust our children. Um, why we should trust our children and how trusting our children actually looks in real life. Peter Gray once um, wrote that the years that we think of as school years should be devoted to discovering who you are and what you like to do, to developing skills in what you like to do, to acquiring social and emotional competence and to gain in confidence that you can learn whatever you want on your own initiative at the time you need to know it. Now, I would suggest that one of the ways in which our children can discover these things is to be in the driving seat of their own educational choices. That discovering what they like to do is easy if we provide them with the time and the support to pursue the things that they love to do. In short, if we trust our children. So when we trust our children to direct their own learning, we recognise that learning happens all the time. 
not only through school based activities or ones that we provide and brandish as suitable or educational, but in everyday activities that our children are doing. Learning happens all the time. We recognise that humans are born with an innate ability to learn and this does not change when our children reach compulsory school age. We don't suddenly need somebody to tell them what to learn and when to learn it. They continue to be naturally curious. We recognise that children intuitively know what they want to learn. Even if they're not explicit about it, their questions, their chosen activities and their play immerse them in their chosen learning. And we recognise that our children are utilising the natural learning process. We trust them to make decisions about how they want to spend their day, what they want to play, what they want to explore, how they engage with the world around them and when they want to do something and for how long. It really boils down to who knows your child best. Teachers know the education system and what is required on the national curriculum. They may know your child a little, but it is, a, it is their job to always be moving your child towards school-based standards. You, as the main caregivers, are certainly an expert on your child. That is frequently why we choose to home educate. We know that the mainstream education system is not a good fit for our families or for our children. And this is the first step um, towards recognising that our children have opinions, thoughts and feelings about what is happening in their lives. However, it's our children who have the ultimate autonomy on themselves. Sorry, their ultimate authority on themselves. They know what lights their fire, they know what makes their eyes sparkle. So how do we enter and remain in a space where we can be confident in and trust the choices our children make and be certain that we are making the right choices alongside them? Well, we don't get far into unschooling without amplifying the core idea that our relationships matter more than anything else. Prioritising our relationships is how we begin to trust our children. Building trust by saying yes to their suggestions. This validates their choices and implicitly sends the message that you trust those choices as part of their learning journey. Trusting our children is enabling them and empowering them. Open communication comes through listening to our children. This means respecting their choices, including when they say no to an idea or change their mind. It also means being in tune with their physical responses too, because actions can often speak louder than words. Being trustworthy partners for our children um, evolves through a thousand daily interactions. Being reliable, present, available and attentive, as well as being their ally, their advocate and their facilitator. Not only how we interact with our children, but with the wider world as well, as our children witness our daily interactions. We are a guide and we walk with them in partnership on their educational journey and we develop and grow our relationships with them. Trusting our children is the opposite of controlling our children. We express unconditional love and support through connection, not using our authority, our adulthoodness to control our children. Um, we would help them reassess their decisions and choices, evaluate those decisions and choices, remember from before previous um, experiences they've had and celebrate with them. We cheer them as they flourish.
So let's apply these ideas to the process of learning to read. Okay, so in no particular order. Learning happens all the time. This means that learning to read is inevitable in a literate, rich environment. Our children's innate ability to learn can be enhanced by having a supportive adult present, enabling learning to flourish and grow. When children have a personal need to learn a new skill, they are intrinsically motivated to do so. And trusting our children and that natural learning process means that they will learn when they are developmentally ready. So, are we ready to take it one step further? Let's have a little look beyond trusting our children with their learning journeys and consider how we can trust our children in all aspects of their lives. What might that mean? And what might that look like? But hang on children can't be trusted. Adults are the ones who know what they're doing and get things right all the time, right? I hope you recognise I don't mean that. We often think that children can't be trusted because they make mistakes, forgetting that we all make mistakes. None of us make good decisions consistently. Trusting our children can seem insurmountable. Truly, how can we trust our children? Trusting our children and even sometimes trusting ourselves is new ground. We are likely to feel um, uncertain and unsure. One of the things that we learn on the hidden curriculum of school is that we can't be trusted, not even to learn the things that we need to learn. We need experts and children need adults to tell them what to do and when to do it. But the trusting is in the intention. We trust that our children have good intentions. We trust that their mistakes are actual mistakes, not deliberate. We refrain from shaming and expressing anger so that our children are free to try and free from the fear of failing. So we begin to trust them to make decisions about their own bodies, when they're hungry, how much they want to eat, when they're thirsty and what they want to drink, when they need to rest or sleep, what they feel comfortable wearing and how they want to wear their hair. We trust them to make decisions about their interaction with others, who they want to play with or be with, when they want to play with others and when they want to be on their own, who they connect with, how they connect with them and when they want to share their toys and resources and other things too like what pictures they want on their bedroom walls what type of headphones they want to use what films they like to watch books they like to read and what music they enjoy listening to maybe even when they want to part with their toys and what they would like to spend their money on or how long they want to spend at the beach or the park or the museum, whether they want to go out at all, and many other decisions about their own lives. In trusting them and enabling them to have power over their own lives, we consistently give them opportunities to practice decision making. We give them the message that their voice matters and that their opinions are valid. They feel able to try new things, to make mistakes, and to learn from their successes and their failures, constantly drawing on their own knowledge to inform each new choice. Each new decision provides an opportunity for our children to make a better choice, and we give them the freedom to make those decisions. So here are some examples of how that might look with it.
in an unschooling within a family setting. So we might set up camping in the garden, knowing that they will come inside before the night is through, but we don't insist that they stay out all night. We watch the same film every day for a year, knowing that there is comfort in their familiarity and we don't force them to watch an alternative. We listen to them refuse to change into swimwear before playing in the sea and then watch them become increasingly wet. And we take spare clothes for them to change into when they're ready. We download the video games they're playing, we play with them, we listen to them retell of their gaming triumphs and quests, and we don't shame them or set arbitrary restrictions. We provide equipment and space when they need to explore cake baking, um, even without a recipe, and then we clean up afterwards too. We organise cosy sleep spots so that our children can rest and sleep when they need to, and we stay with them for as long as they need us to. We support their decisions when they choose to play with a long forgotten toy that is seemingly too old for them now. We listen to them when they are clear about what they want and what they need to feel confident in their abilities. We allow them to decide when they are developmentally ready for the next step. We allow them to change their minds and respond to how they feel about the reality of a situation in the present moment. I hope that you can see from these examples how we partner our children in their decision making, strengthening our relationships and being a trustworthy ally by listening to their choices, but not deliberately allowing them to unnecessarily bear the full consequences of those decisions. Being trustworthy and expressing unconditional love through prioritising our relationship is the foundation of trusting our children as they also learn to trust us. Wendy Presnitz wrote, life learning is about trusting kids to learn what they need to know and about helping them to learn and grow in their own ways. It's about respecting the everyday experiences that enable children to understand and interact with the world and their culture. The world would inevitably be a better place. Our children would be empowered and equipped to make decisions for themselves. They would know themselves and their own mind, and they would be confident in directing their own steps and managing their own lives as young adults. We trust that they will learn from the choices they make. We trust that their experiences will provide them with information that they can draw on when they make similar decisions in the future. Making mistakes or wrong choices doesn't make someone untrustworthy. It makes them inexperienced. And we trust that those experiences will contribute towards learning. We trust the flow of life, the innate joy of learning, our children's natural curiosity, and the organic learning process. Children will learn what they need to, when they need to. Children are capable and will develop, learn and grow in their own time frame without coercion or control. We trust that our children are doing the best that they can in each moment. We trust that they're getting to know themselves, have opinions about whether they want to be active, rest, seek knowledge, develop a skill. And in trusting our children and partnering them, we are opening up the world of learning as they are strong and safe in a family unit. And they have confidence in themselves and their choices. This becomes a base, a foundation unhindered from shame or constantly de defaulting to adults to direct them. Our children are confident and secure in their ability to make decisions. And from this point of unrestricted exploration of the world, they can flourish and grow. In short, we give our children the message that they can be trusted.
You can find out more about trusting our children at liveplaylearn.org and you can join me on Facebook at Live Play Learn for more unschooling support. Um, I hope this has really been helpful. Um, I hope that you will watch it again so that you can begin to absorb what these things truly mean and go over the points that maybe um, will help you to move forward in trusting your children. And I hope that as you implement these things, your relationships with your children will be strengthened, that you will learn to trust in each other and that you will see firsthand your children flourish and grow in the lives that they lead. Okay, everyone should be able to hear me. I think I've done yeah. all the right settings. Excellent. You've got a little bit of a buzz on your audio there, so better now. Okay. And well, now it's back again. Oh, I don't really know how to change that. Yeah, just <laughs> check, check that the your uh, plug is in properly. Your uh, oh, okay. maybe yeah. it might be picked Let's left. Do it I don't wiggly. know. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so Heidi will take questions now. Chat is obviously enabled, and um, you can always raise your hands uh, yeah. on Zoom as well. So Esther has actually kicked us off um, with a question talking about older children. Um, I will, uh, yeah, I'll read out the whole thing just so everyone's got the context. Um, I'm concerned about outside influences, for example, advertising campaigns that take advantage of children by drawing them to their products and ideas, using what they enjoy and love to hook them. Can you comment on this with older children who may have more access to other people and the media for whom consequences may be damaging? I guess that in building a strong relationship with them, it keeps them safer from being targeted or even groomed. So my experience having um, children who are always unschooled, um, and as I've mentioned, I have four children and my eldest two are 12 and 14. So they're definitely becoming more independent and entering into that world of, you know, making um, friends that uh, maybe I have not met or into families that I um, have not met and like you say um, advertising campaigns via sort of social media and and such like so we're definitely um, uh, branching out into that that world and have been for a few years um, my so you're right it's about the relationship for us we have a relationship where my, my children will um, maybe come and say, oh, I've seen this. I'm thinking of signing up for it. Or um, or sometimes they, they even do connect with um, people that they think are interesting. But, you know, based on this idea that they're being hooked in by the things that they, um, you know, love. And and but they're very aware based on um, how we have spoken to them before about these things or oh, this looks interesting you know would you like to try it um or they think it looks interesting and we try it but we're very open in our discussion about what is happening so um you know we've talked before about youtube videos where where people um you know un, you know the unboxing of toys and they do those unboxing things and and other YouTube videos and we've talked about how that isn't actually real life you know we've reflected on that together you know this is them um, you know how they are sent those toys as part of a promotional thing um, so we've always had these discussions about um, about that but truly if they want to try something um, then um, you know like anything that we're advertised if if we think all oh, that looks good and that's interesting if they want to try it, then we try it, then we do try it out, but always in the context of being um, sort of conscious about whether this is working for me, you know, it's all, always from that reflective point. I think when um, children are brought up in that atmosphere of, is this working for me? Is this what I need? Is this, ben you know, is this um, filling my life with something that um, fills me with joy or you know meets a need or in a way that is suitable for me then they continue to apply those you know in these situations I think when children have been had less experience of making their own choices 
or even being able to, like I said, being able to change their mind, even that aspect of being able to change their mind and say, actually, this isn't working for me, um, then that becomes more difficult because they're not in a space where that's where that's their norm. Um, I hope that I, I do. I, I mean, I do agree that building strong relationships keeps them. It's hard to say, it, you know, completely keeps them from being targeted or even groomed. But I think because they have um, a stronger relationship with us, if things don't feel right for either us or for them, then there's all there's that open space for communication and conversation. Um, and again, that's down to that relationship aspect. I hope that helps, Esther. Um, there's nothing else in the chat, and I can't see anyone with a hand up or anything. I don't know if that's just my view. I don't know if anyone else can see. Okay. Joe, Joe has a hand raised. Joe Chalton has a hand oh, raised. Oh, hi, Joe. Yeah, hi, I can hi, see Joe. you now. Hi, Joe. I'll, I'll add her to, you, to the spotlight. Oh, hi. fabulous. Thank you. That helps me. It's nice to be able to see people when they're talking to <laughs> yeah, me. Sorry, hi, Joe. Like pretty bad in here. Um, I, um, especially my husband, who's perhaps not as on board with the whole unschooling thing as perhaps I am, um, have some concerns about if we make a commitment to take part in something um, and then change our minds how how do we go about talking about well we've said we're going to do it you know we said we're going to this birthday party or we've we've made a commitment to this club or whatever to go for a while how do you kind of balance that with them suddenly saying they don't want to go because the computer game looks more exciting or they'd rather go to the park or so it's it's that sort of responsibility of i've committed to this um well, I know nothing is ever written in stone, and as adults, we all dip in and out of things. But it, it's a bit of how do you teach that sort of responsibility? I'm responsible for making sure I have an early night if I have a busy day the next day. I'm responsible for I've said I will help with this, so I need to. That that kind of that kind of thing. that kind of aspect. Um, so it always comes back down to relationship, and that um, is why. Um, it's not difficult to answer those questions but it's difficult to say there's a set there's a set answer like for everybody um for me it's about having a conversation with um, your children and obviously age related as well age dependent as well um it's about having a conversation with your children and prioritizing the relationship if you're making suggestions that are causing a rift in your relationship that that your children are kicking back against and saying i really really don't want to do this um then you do the thing that prioritizes the relationship, which in this case would be, you know, if they're saying, no, I don't want to go to that. If during conversation, you know, they're, they're adamant that they don't want to go, then you don't go. Um, however, you know, there's room for conversations. There's room for saying, okay, let's make, you know, you can make suggestions. This comes down to problem solving. Um, do you just need to take a break for this week? Um, is it that you like the activity, but you don't like the teacher? You know, you want, we need to find like an alternative. Um, I'm trying to think of things that we've drawn on in the past. Um, yeah, so taking a break for a week, maybe, or two weeks to, and then to try again. Um, do you want to go, you know, would it help if we went along and I sat in the class with you? Is that, you know, what is it that is not fulfilling that need? Um, the computer games you mentioned, you know, remembering we can, we can play that when we get back you know we you know setting out that um you know that time frame for them if they're able to um process that information like well we can do this class but the computer game will still be here when we get back the 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 class is actually now that's that's not that's immovable um, and having those conversations mm -hmm. and problem solving um together but as i said if if that then comes back with a short short shrift no i absolutely don't want to do this then then you 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 know you prioritize that relationship and i mean you i mean you phrase the question in you know how do i teach my child well in unschooling we don't see ourselves as, as teaching them they will learn they will learn these things in time they will learn yeah. about um commitment because they will watch you in in your life they will learn about um commitment when they're developmentally ready they will they will learn from these decisions that that means oh hang on a minute i decided i didn't want to do that anymore and now and now I really do want to do that and I've decided not to you know they will 
they will then learn next time that you know maybe they need to do another week or you know or do or do the block or give it a longer a longer time um so we don't we're not explicitly teaching them but they will but they will when they're developmentally ready and able learn to commit to things whether that's a class or whether that's um um you know just to, like committing to finishing the lego model you know that's you know that's sort of that's a low level commitment you know so we thought we think of commitment in that in terms of committing to a job or committing to a you know to another person but it could just be committing to i'm going to complete this um this task yeah thank you that's that's helpful thank you <laughs> anyone else have a question i think there yeah, isn't any uh, uh, Tim's going to ask you something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I, I should have raised my hands up. But I can't find my hand. <laughs> oh, there you oh, are. There we go. Here's my hand. Here's my hand. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, now I, I, I can speak now. Thank you. Um, yeah. Um, question about unschooling has always been around um, uh, some... Okay, how, how do I phrase it? Uh, but we have witnessed certain uh, some parents who justify... Uh, their um, children's um, behavior um, or, or, the, or the lack of it uh, by saying that I'm, I'm schooling my kid, therefore I do not intervene with whatever or how they, however they, they behave and they are free to, to roam around and uh, even in public places and sometimes it can be dangerous, especially the smaller kid. Um, and how do you... Um, I guess, um, how, do you, how do you see that? Do, do, do you see that's justifiable? I mean, do you think that allowing parents to, um, to, to let their, their, their child roam around and even potentially dangerous is justifiable? And uh, if not, then what's the boundary? I mean, where do, where do we draw the line saying that, uh, yeah, you, you still need to behave certain norm of society, uh, even though you're unschooled. Thank you yeah so this is this is where the partnership element comes in because we don't um we don't it's not like a, a child led you know we do whatever the child wants um and we let them do whatever they want um there's an element where we support them in the decisions that they make so the examples i gave maybe um clothing that they wear um which as we're looking around the world would be um you know culturally appropriate clothing um you know, we guide them and we support them um, in um, what is acceptable in certain places. So if, if I'm going to take my children to a wedding, for example, I need to maybe have a discussion with them about what is expected in that place. And I need to help them achieve that. Um, so, I mean, I know, for example, that we have taken our children to funerals where we wanted to attend you know we as the adults wanted to be there but my children were really really small and so therefore we sat near the back so that our children weren't disruptive to the general um you know ceremony and there have been points where i you know where we realize that our children are um you know we've sort of reached a threshold in terms of what they can manage so then i or my husband have then taken them out. Um, so um, reaching that balance in, ter in terms of um, what is culturally expected of them and helping them to achieve that and preparing them for that, but then also recognizing that some of those situations are um, not, they're not child friendly. You know, our, our children want to be up and moving around and making noise. Um, so as much as we can, uh, you know getting um supporting them in achieving a bit of quiet but also recognizing that there's there's a threshold for them where they're not going to be able to manage that entirely and and then making an alternative or a, a a plan um whereby we can um move them so it's not about putting them in unsafe situations you know this is the partnership element um it's about mm. being there and, and supporting um and supporting them and guiding them being that guide um, for them would be my uh, perspective. Does that help? Yeah, it, it, it's very helpful. Thank you. I like the, the, the term uh, sensible and, uh, you know, it's not like everything goes and uh, yeah. you still need to put 
It's not a wild. Yeah, right. it's not wild free for all. That's not. Yeah, <laughs> that's not. Principle and story. That, that's very good. Partnership. I, I, I like it. I have another question, but I'm going to yield the time to the the uh, to, to the audience. And if nobody else has a question, then maybe I'll ask my second question. Okay. I think what Tim is saying, you know, I think there are some parents who take that, take it that way as unschooling is feral. Mm, um, no. <laughs> and um, that's not actually helping your children particularly or helping them prepare for the world they're going to enter no. as adults. Okay, does anyone else have a question or shall I pop Tim back in? Okay, Tim, I think you get to go again. Let me just put you back there. Thank you so much. You've been a wonderful audience and allow me to ask the second question. Uh, my second question is about uh, curriculum design. I know unschooling don't have a curriculum per se, but uh, uh, in Taiwan, uh, we uh, all the homeschoolers have to apply for government uh, to, uh, to government to grant to be exempt from school attendance. So, uh, so uh, as a somebody who work on the, the review board, uh, those who have parents sitting on the review board. Uh, it, it's challenging for us that parents come in with a one sheet of A4 paper and just write unschooling period. And then say, this is what we plan to do for the next 12 years, you know, from age six to 18. Um, is, that, is that sensible? I mean, we, we found it not quite sensible, but is it true that they can just say, you know, we're going to follow the child, the child's going to tell us what we're going to teach them or not. And then, you know, so we are not going to tell you how we're going to do it. Uh, I just want to hear what your comments are and how we can. Yeah, it's, um, we are really, really fortunate in the UK in that, uh, you know, adults have parental responsibility for a child's education and we are free from, even if, um, you are known to the local authority. We are free from um, having to follow a curriculum, um, and we and it is acceptable for us to um, outline our philosophy, our educational philosophy. So, like you say, a page of A4 that says, "I'm, um, you know, my children are autonomously educated, and uh, we choose to unschool," and and and, and you know, expand that into an A4 page. Um, and I and I think we're incredibly uh, fortunate, and um, it's a really um, it's a privileged position um, to be in. Um, it is. Um, I don't really know what the answer to your question is because I think that um, you know because we're in that privileged position, um, you know the education is our responsibility. So yes, I think it is um, suitable to be able to to tell my local authority that you know that's what I'm doing. Thank you very much. I have informed you of my intentions. And that and that for us and that for us is fine and unschooling does work you know as you say it's a, an educational philosophy it is a way of living um you know for, for our children's entire educational experience in terms of compulsory educational experience from the age of so here that's uh the term after they turn five until um until 18. um I don't know if there might be other people that would be better to discuss that with Tim that are, that are actually present um, at the the conference. And you and you're on in the in the um, on the app. There's a little group, isn't there, Juliet, which inv is involves um, other speakers. Um, yeah. So yeah. Uh, maybe you could um, ask there and connect there. Any book recommendations for Christian unschooling? No, there aren't any. <laughs> to my knowledge <laughs> um actually well i know that there's a, a blog for kathy could see um so kathy oh, okay. Kutsi was uh, was an unsc a christian unschooler and i think her her blog was christian-unschooling.com yeah there's another um, one called the path less taken that's a christian um, blog yeah and i know kathy could see is in the process of writing a book as well okay so um Anyway, and, um, I, yeah. Iona has a question. Hi, Iona. Actually, I wanted to answer um, the question previous. I know in America there's plenty of unschoolers, and there states have their own uh, each their own regulations, and it's it, because it's such a big thing in America unschooling. They're not as uh, under the radar as we are in in the UK so far. So I'm not sure how how much this privileged position will last, but. 
um, so far in UK, we are asked to provide um, a report of what's happened the year behind. Now, even though we might have taken a very hands-off approach, learning will have happened. And it's no big deal to sort of uh, look through your photographs and see what sort of learning has happened. And um, um, I suppose there can be some sort of coaching for unschooling parents to know how to express what their children have learned. Because if they haven't learned anything and they've been, I don't know, uh, having unhealthy habits, maybe that is something that they can improve. But I know that unschoolers have all sorts of ways of strewing certain things to perk interests or feed interests or, you know, it's that partnership. And you're not just neglecting your child, you're um, refraining your imposition and top down uh, will on the child. On the other hand, you want them to thrive. And so you do hopefully notice when they do, and it would be, very good to inform the authority that they are thriving so that they don't, you know, get concerned or <laughs> intervene. <laughs> yeah. I was looking for other hands. Um, Esther had sort of said uh, about groups, having a group that sometimes you've got people who will let their children run wild and they say, oh, we're unschooling. And I think the, there's a problem with that because as a group, you know, it, an individual approach shouldn't be influencing the entire group. A group can still set a standard and have values, shared values, shared ethos, and, and say what is appropriate behavior because that's uh, the world. Yeah. You know, you can't go into, into Tesco and let your kids run wild and tell the manager of mm -hmm. the unschooling so it doesn't it's fine it, it doesn't work that way yeah no. you know and um, i think if, if that's the case then that's not i mean that's why we're like being in tune with our children if your children need a place where they need to run around and run wild then go and meet your friends in the go and meet your friends in the woods you know or go down to the beach and run wild or find a uh, or find a group that has an outside area where that's a possibility yeah. um you know it's it's yeah, like you say, Juliet, it's about, um, you know, the, if that it's just not the right group for you, if that's if that's what your children need, yeah, you need to fulfil that need elsewhere. This isn't yeah. the space to be doing that in. Yeah, and the thing is, I've, whenever I've had to kind of say to when when there are times when I've had to say to my children, you can't behave this way or that, I'll say to them, look, the reason I'm telling you this is because I want you to have friends as you grow up, because if you behave this way around other people you may find nobody wants to play with you. So you've got to, you know, the, and I know your approach may be slightly different. Um, I, I kind of had a bit, bit of a mixed approach, uh, also part of my generation, I guess. Um, but just really sort of saying, you know, there is a reason, it's answering the why. So I'm not just making this a rule because I fancy saying that today. It's because actually think about it for a moment. Would you want to play with somebody who, does this or whatever so it's it i think it is important for them to to also learn to as they get older particularly and are able to put themselves in the position of somebody else you know yeah. when they're younger they can't they're very ego-centered um the sun and the moon rise all around them and uh you know so so but as they get older and they they approach sort of their teen years they're meant to be able to put themselves in another perspective and then you can bring that in um, so that's when it comes yeah. down to this being developmentally ready. Yeah. Uh, being in tune with your children, you know, if, if, if they're able to understand that, then that's, that's, yeah. you can explain that to them and then they take that on board and adjust yeah. their, you know, going back to that trust element, adjust their decision making process accordingly. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and make a better decision because they're better informed. Yes. And, and Tim has mentioned how in Taiwan, homeschoolers need to file a progress report as well after the school year ends. Now, in the UK, if you are known to the local authority, the local authority may make informal inquiries as to the education you're providing. So even as an unschooler, I think it's good to bring out how would you respond to your local authority as, you know, how do you tick their little boxes while being able to unschool? Uh, so like Iona said, it's really useful to be in, the, in some of the Facebook groups and other groups that have um, really um, good ways of expressing in educational terms that the local authority accept and understand. Um, although, although it is worth mentioning that unschooling is, um, under the guidelines, a perfectly acceptable mm. um, term. 
um, of, of how to complete um, a report. And a report is backwards facing. What have we done in the last year? What have my children done in the last year? And like Iona said, it, um, you know, like if you need guidance with that, there are people out there who um who know how to i mean the, the baking example that someone's put in the chat is um is primary but know how to pull out learning from everyday activities so the baking example is the, is the measuring and the and the um you know multiplying up or dividing depending on how big your family is or how who you're catering for um and um you know, learning about temperature and, and degrees and Fahrenheit and, and um, I can't even think what the term is. Con and when converting. You're, and converting and, and all those things. Um, and, you know, and that's just in baking. That's that's in one one activity that's taken you yeah. an hour. You know, we can, we, there are people out there who can do that for, you know, your trip to the woods and your trip to the beach and you're building sandcastles and collecting shells and, yeah. and um, you know, whatever it is. There are people out there who can help it, you. It's about yeah. using the right lingo, basically, yeah. coming down to just finding yeah. the terminology that it would fall under. Mm. And, it's a bit like uh, playing a game really it, it, it is playing the system it is playing, playing the, the, system. the system and uh, the thing is the in this country uh, some local authorities are overstepping and are asking for things which which is not entirely lawful to to require um so we we do have to learn how to be very clever in our words it's not this is not we're not talking about deceit we're not talking about uh, it it's actually we don't even recognize the learning when it's happening it is happening but because it seems so natural and easy and part of your day, you don't put a title or a label on it, but there is a label for it. You just need to find out what is the label yeah. and then you can slot it in neatly.